Hello students, welcome to the lecture on sports and nutrition. And after this lecture, we will be able to learn the following objectives. Discuss on balanced diet, understand the elements of diet and exercise that impact learning, explain the components of balanced diet, define the role of exercise in diet, describe the factors influencing nutritional requirements, explain the importance of games and sports in our life, define sports nutrition. Let us start with the lecture. You all must be familiar with the word balanced diet, right? Let's start with the concept of balanced diet. A balanced diet is one that provides an adequate intake of energy and nutrients for maintenance of the body and therefore good health. An ideal human diet contains fat, protein, carbohydrates, vitamins, minerals, water and fiber all in correct proportions. These proportions vary for each individual because everyone has different metabolic rates and levels of activity. Malnutrition results from an unbalanced diet. This can be due to an excess of some dietary components and lack of other components, not just a complete lack of food. An adequate diet provides sufficient energy for the performance of metabolic work although the energy in food is in an unspecified form. A balanced diet provides all dietary requirements in the correct proportions. Ideally, this would be 1 by 7 fat, 1 by 7 protein and 5 by 7 carbohydrate. Energy is provided by carbohydrates, fats and proteins. Proteins are a provider of energy in an emergency but are primarily used as building blocks for growth and repair of many body tissues. This energy providing compounds are needed in large quantities in our diet, so is described as macronutrients. We also need much smaller amounts of other nutrients such as vitamins and minerals. Because much smaller quantities are needed for a balanced diet, these are known as micronutrients. Despite the small quantities needed, these are essential to provide a healthy diet as they have specific roles in metabolic reactions and as structural components. What happened, Jimmy? Papa doesn't want me to eat pizza. But you ate pizza in lunch. Why you want it again? Because I love pizza. Oh, even I love pizza. But we need to eat all kinds of food. Why can't I eat pizza always? Okay, tell me how many kinds of food do you know? Fruits, vegetables, bread, oh there are many. Do you know why we eat food? Yes, to get energy to work and play. Otherwise, I feel tired and hungry. Yes, you're right. We also need food to grow. Yeah. Let me tell you about different kinds of food. We can divide food in five types. I can see bread in first one. Yeah, these are made of cereals. These are called carbohydrates. In second, it is butter. Mmm, yummy. Yes, these are fats. Now comes fish and milk. These contain proteins. Here are fruits. Mummy always wants me to eat these. Yes, these are vitamins and minerals. Oh, there is water also. Now let us understand what these different foods do. Like car needs patrol to run, our body also needs energy to work. This energy comes from carbohydrates. They also gives us instant energy. <coughs> carbohydrates, energy giving foods. Let us now move to fats. Fats also gives energy, but they give energy very slowly. Body keeps them in store. And if you don't get carbohydrates on time, body uses them. 
like mama keeps some extra chocolates away at home, body also keeps some extra energy in store. Oh. <laughs> That's store of energy in body, low energy. But if you don't use this stored energy, you can become very fat. So you should eat less of these. So, my friend John is fat because he keeps eating and does not play. Yes, you're right. <laughs> More fat. You become fatty. Now proteins, how they help. Here are proteins. These help you to grow. You know, body keeps building new cells. These proteins help to build and repair cells. <laughs> proteins, bodybuilding and repairing. Let me show you more. Why this person looks sick? There are few nutrients which keep our body healthy and they fight diseases. These are called vitamins and minerals. <laughs> Vitamins and minerals keep body healthy, fight diseases. <coughs> now, most important part of body. This is water. Yeah, this is very important. You know, half of our weight is water in our body. Oh, I am of 30 kg. That means there is 15 kg of water in my body. Yes, it helps to keep our body clean and helps in digesting our food. Water keeping body clean and help in digestion. Let me show you something. Why milk again? Because it has everything. This is called a wholesome food. Let me note it down. So now on, I would eat all kinds of food, but less fat. Let's revise what we've learned. What is this? Oh, this is called the food pyramid. It tells which food we should eat more and which we should eat less. Oh, so we should eat less oil and butter. Yes. And see at the bottom. We should eat more cereals, breads, and also vegetables and fruits. Food is one of the basic necessities of life. It is more than other basic needs, shelter and clothing. So, food or the lack of it has great influence on the destiny of one's health and the community at large. Nutrition. Nutrition is the science of foods. The nutrients present in them, their action, interaction and balance in relationship to health and disease. It has been defined as food at work in the body. Health. Health means complete physical, mental and social well-being. But it commonly implies to the general well-being of the body or the condition to be fit. Health is a condition of being safe and sound. Health is a state of complete physical, mental, social well-being and not merely the absence of disease or infirmity. It uncompresses all aspects of life put together in a way that is comfortable as that one can enjoy a vibrant life and work and play. Nutrients Nutrients are the component of food that is required by the body in adequate amount to grow, reproduce and lead a normal healthy life. These are proteins, carbohydrates, fats, vitamins, minerals and water. Nutritional status Nutritional status is the condition, state of health of an individual as influenced by the utilization of nutrients in his body. Good or adequate nutrition Good or adequate nutrition implies 
that the essential nutrients are present in correct amount and proportion. Nutritional care. Nutritional care is the application of the science and art of human nutrition to food and people. Malnutrition. Malnutrition means undesirable kind of nutrition leading to ill health. It results from lack, excess or imbalance of nutrients in the diet. It comprises of two types, undernutrition and overnutrition. Contributes to a healthy, balanced diet. A balanced diet provides you with all the nutrients to support growth, energy and health. The two keys to a healthy, balanced diet are eating the right amount of food for how active you are and eating a range of foods. This is what balanced means. To achieve a balanced diet, you must eat from each of the food groups contained in the food pyramid below. The food groups are dairy products, vegetables, cereals, fruit, pulses, meat if you are a non-vegetarian, sugar and fat. Now let's get into the more important bit. In what proportion should you consume these food groups and of course, what Indian foods contribute as healthy options to these food groups? Vegetables, dairy products and cereals contribute 27% each to your balanced diet. Looking at each one of them individually, vegetables. Try to avoid anything that's creamy or deep fried. To reduce the amount of fat in your meal, choose dishes with tomato-based sauces such as tandoori and madrasi. Also add a lot of greens such as palak and lentils as side veggies as they are high in fibers. Unlike a lot of the western counterparts, India has the unique advantage of making dairy products a part of the regular eating cycle. Have a cup of yogurt with your meal. Yogurt has zero carbs, zero sugar and zero trans fats, making it your ideal dairy product to have. For those with a sweet tooth, add a little sugar to your yogurt instead of having basundi and shrikhand, which are very high on sugar and calorie content. Getting to the third most important component of your food intake, cereals. Healthy cereal options are amongst the easiest to adopt. Start off by replacing white bread with whole wheat brown bread. Whole wheat brown bread, like the name mentions, uses all the three parts of the wheat, which in turn ensures that your bread is high in fiber and vitamin B6. High fiber content not only aids digestion, but makes you feel full and ensures that you don't overeat, hence keeping your weight in check. Also replace white rice with brown rice. Having brown rice thrice a week has proven benefits. Most significantly, it drastically reduces the chances of diabetes. Also baked chivda and poha are healthy cereal options for midday snacking in comparison to pakoras. We'll let you in on a secret. Pulses are your best bet for weight loss. With negligible fat content, pulses are packed with protein, vitamins, minerals and fiber. In fact, pulses are so effective for weight loss that once you include them in your daily diet, the extra kilos almost never come back. Pulses anyways form a crucial part of our meal like dal, rajma and chana. Make sure you don't ignore these during your meal. For those non-vegetarians, try to stick to white meat like chicken or fish. Most of the tandoor food dishes like chicken tikka or fish tikka are cooked in almost no oil. Stay away from red meats like lamb and beef which are high in saturated fats and cholesterol which in turn leads to heart diseases. Finally, coming to fruits, sugars and fats. When choosing fruits, 
select fruits which are high on fiber like oranges and apples. These help in digestion and keeping your system clean. It might not be a bad idea to replace a lot of your sugar and dessert intake with fruits like mangoes and strawberries. Fruits have natural sugar which is much easier to digest and very less harmful to your body in comparison. So the next time you might want to have a fruit salad over those gulab jamuns. And finally, a minimal amount of fat content is essential. Try clarified butter or spray on olive oil. Now that you know what your food intakes should be in every group, here is what your diet chart looks like. For vegetarians, dairy products, cereals and vegetables are the most important and fill in 27% each of your daily food intake. Fruits should include approximately 9% of your food intake, followed by pulses at 6% and sugar and fat at 2% each. For non-vegetarians, the mix is fairly similar. The only difference being that you can reduce the pulses intake by 3% and replace that with meat. Since pulses take care of your protein need, replacing pulses with white meats like chicken or fish will still allow you to keep your protein intake Two factors that have an impact on our learning capacity are eating properly and regular exercise. High saturated fats. The eating a diet with saturated fats will impair learning and memory. The effects that glucose and sugars have in higher fat foods explain the link between saturated fats and mental performance. Insufficient vitamins and minerals. Not having proper nutrients in our diet has a negative effect on learning abilities. Breakfast Breakfast is often referred to as the most important part of the day. Eating breakfast greatly enhances mental performance. Exercise improves cognition. Researchers say that increased oxygen flowing to the brain as a result of exercise improve their performance on cognitive tests. The increased oxygen intake improved mental sharpness and reaction times. Exercise improves memory. The reports that exercise has benefits that improve memory. Exercise enhances the formation and survival of new nerve cells and connections between nerve cells which improve long-term memory. Let us study the components of balanced diet. A healthy diet that consists of low-fat dairy, whole grains, fruits and vegetables and reduced sugar leads to fewer incidences of high cholesterol and heart disease, obesity, diabetes and even cancer. Fruits and Vegetables Adults maintaining 2000 calories per day diet should consume an average of 2 cups of fruit per day and 2.5 cups of vegetables to maintain a balanced diet. One of the most effective means of determining whether our vegetable and fruit intake is balanced is to make sure we eat a variety of colors each day. Grains To improve digestion and maintain energy levels, a healthy balanced diet consists of an average of three one-ounce servings of whole grains. Dairy Dairy is important to maintain healthy blood and bones. Fat Fat is necessary for ultimate health. A balanced diet relies on fat sources for no more than 25-35% to 35 of the daily caloric intake. Sodium The amount of salt needed to maintain a balanced diet typically is already present in prepared and packed foods. The average adult should eat fewer than 2300 mg of sodium per day. Meat The USDA recommends eating between 5 and 6 ounces of protein-rich foods 
each day. Sugar Maintaining low concentrations of sugar is an important ingredient in a balanced diet. Before moving on to next topic, answer the following questions. What are the components of balanced diet? It is widely recognized by health authorities that an increase in physical activity would be beneficial for most people. Exercise can improve cardiac, respiratory and muscular functions. It is now widely recognized that diet can have an influence on the ability to perform exercise and this is particularly true in the case of endurance sports. What's more important, diet or exercise? Now this is a question that comes up a lot among people who are new to bodybuilding. And if you really stop to think about it, I think the answer becomes quite obvious. But it's always nice to hear an expert's opinion on this question. And I heard that just recently because this past spring I attended the Arnold Classic Bodybuilding and Fitness Expo and I attended the Ask Arnold Seminar and one of the seminar attendees actually asked Arnold this exact question and of course Arnold gave a great answer. Arnold's reply was, look at it this way, when it comes to living, what do you think is more important, food or water? I mean after all, if you stopped consuming either one of them, you wouldn't live for very long. And there's all kinds of other comparisons we could make here as well. What's more important to running a car? Gas or oil? What's more important for growing plants? Water or sunshine? What's more important for achieving satisfaction? Length or girth? <laughs> I think you get the idea. Obviously, both diet and exercise are critically important to achieving bodybuilding success. However, from a practical point of view, I believe that exercise is slightly more important. I mean, you gotta eat. So regardless if you exercise or not, you're still gonna eat on a regular basis. Or else you wouldn't be alive and watching this video right now. But you don't have to exercise. So for someone who's brand new to the whole bodybuilding and fitness game, I recommend that the first thing they focus on is working out on a regular basis. A basic three day per week weight training program is a great place to start. Once somebody gets the momentum going from working out on a regular basis, they'll automatically start looking for ways to maximize their performance through better nutrition choices. So my advice for newbies is to start with exercise. Initially focus all your attention and energy on just the exercise component of your bodybuilding routine and let the rest follow in suit. There's no need to overwhelm yourself with too much too soon. I hate it when I see someone who isn't even working out yet and they're afraid to start because they blow things out of proportion. They think they're going to need to follow some crazy strict diet. They think they're going to have to take all kinds of expensive supplements and that they're going to have to live like a monk in a temple. I mean just take things one step at a time and the first step is to actually get your ass into the gym. Don't bog yourself down with anything more than that. Once the exercise component is in place, the other stuff will start to fall in place as well. I mean, you wouldn't take a kindergarten student and try to get them started with algebra and chemistry and physics right off the bat. I mean, just keep it simple. Let's start by learning the alphabet and adding up one plus one. All the rest of the stuff, that'll follow in due time. So while both diet and exercise are critically important to your overall bodybuilding success, start with the exercise component first. Once you're consistent with that, then you can focus your attention on improving your diet. There's no need to overwhelm yourself with too much too soon. Just take it one step at a time and enjoy the journey. Fuels for exercise. Exercise is a significant challenge to energy metabolism and results in increased rates of utilization of the two main metabolic fuels, fat and carbohydrate. During exercise, energy must be supplied to the muscles at the same rate that they use it. Otherwise, the exerciser is forced to slow down. Any mismatching of the rate of energy expenditure and the rate of energy replacement represents an energy crisis in them working muscles and is generally referred to as fatigue. 
the generating of energy occurs in the mitochondria or the micro power stations in the muscle cells this occurs when either carbohydrate or fat is metabolized or burned these two fuels are metabolized to produce a usable form of energy this usable form of energy is a substance called adenosine triphosphate or ATP the ATP is the common energy source which is used in all cells of the body for all biological activities the importance of oxygen the two fuels fat and carbohydrate are stored in the body and are recruited when required but oxygen has to be transported from the atmosphere via the lungs and blood to the working muscles the combustion of fat and carbohydrate dependent on oxygen is called aerobic metabolism the aerobic production of energy does not produce any toxic waste products and so is the preferred system for prolonged exercise if the intensity of exercise is increased beyond a certain point aerobic metabolism alone cannot supply energy at the rate needed as this happens energy is no longer obtained from fat and is supplied exclusively from carbohydrate through anaerobic metabolism sports such as marathon running and long distance cycling or swimming rely almost exclusively on aerobic metabolism while short intensive sports such as sprinting or weightlifting are largely anaerobic energy stores the carbohydrate used by the muscles during exercise is mainly stored in the muscles themselves close to the site at which it is to be used the stored form of carbohydrate is glycogen a substance consisting of a large number of glucose molecules joined together training training allows the muscles to use more of the oxygen offered to them by the circulatory system so that the energy expenditure of the muscles can be more adequately covered by aerobic metabolism training therefore allows the muscles to work at greater intensity that is more speed power for the same amount of carbohydrate breakdown as would have been needed before the training period diet for exercise one of the main objectives of any person involved in medium to long term exercise should be to have an efficient aerobic system which will help to ensure that fat is utilized as much as possible thus sparing the limited stores of glycogen the second area which a competitor can influence is diet numerous researchers have shown that the ability to exercise for a prolonged period of time will be significantly reduced if the glycogen stores are not full at the start of the exercise let's discuss some factors influencing nutritional requirements Habits about eating are influenced by developmental considerations, gender, ethnicity and culture, beliefs about food, personal preferences, religious practices, lifestyle, economics, medication and therapy, health, alcohol consumption, advertising and psychological factors. Development. People in rapid periods of growth, that is infancy and adolescence, have increased needs for nutrients gender nutrient requirements are different for men and women because of body composition and reproductive functions ethnicity and culture ethnicity often determines food preferences traditional food example rice for asians pasta for italians and curry for indians are eaten long after other customs are abandoned beliefs about food beliefs about effects of food on health and well-being can affect food choices many people acquire their beliefs about food from television magazines and other media personal preference people develop likes and dislikes based on associations with typical food a child who loves to visit his grandparents may love pickled crab apples because they are served in the grandparents home another child 
who dislikes a very strict aunt grows up to dislike the chicken casserole she often prepares. People often carry such preferences into adulthood. The importance of sports and games is being increasingly recognized in India from both the educational and social points of view. Sports foster friendship and amity. Nor does the belief hold well any more that those who take part in sports or games would be no good at studies and that each year their absence from the class or shortage of lectures would be condoned because they can either attend to their studies or be on the playing field for some game or the other. Physical fitness is of the utmost important for everyone, young and old. Participation in games and sports invariably ensures good health, fitness and generally freedom from ailments of various types. Regular participation in sports provides a healthy channel for diversion of energies. Society gains in many ways when the government encourages sports and games everywhere, provides playgrounds, the necessary equipment and other facilities and rewards outstanding sportsmen so as to encourage others also to play games. While most people concede the importance of sports in a healthy society and under a good government, there has also been much criticism which is fully justified too about the craze, enthusiasm and fervor displayed by people of all ages, especially the country's youth, except the sober elders and duty conscious officers and employees, whenever cricket matches are being played in India or abroad and wherever India is one of the participants. Work virtually comes to a stop in offices, factories, schools and colleges. Surely, this is not what we mean by sport and sportsmanship. The right description for this habit is craze. It does not develop any of the values which sports and games inculcate. Discipline and playing the game in the right spirit. The relatively poor show of our athletes in international competitions does not weaken the case for encouraging sports which help to lay the foundations of a healthy, sound society. Playing sports and how they impact you. Just as a library is necessary for the mental health of a person, so is a playground for the physical health. Playing sports, indoor or outdoor, is important for the mental as well as physical development of an individual and every sport has its own unique advantages. Let's look at a few sports and how they impact us. 1. Cricket There are many benefits on playing cricket. Cricket helps in enhancing hand-eye coordination. When you play cricket, you get fit by running between wickets, running up to bowl and running after the ball to field it. When you play cricket, you will develop stamina because cricket games can last for a very long time. 2. Football Football players require a great level of stamina. Among various factors, concentration is the most important thing. Even a tiny distraction can make you lose the game. Thus players can increase their concentration spans with this game. Further, football works very well to develop your leg muscles, namely the shins and thighs. Legs being the largest muscles of the body are the most crucial. They enhance muscle growth across the body by releasing testosterone and growth hormones. 3. Hockey Hockey is a fast-paced sport that improves its player's pace, agility and lower body strength. Playing hockey is a fun and effective way of burning off calories with its fast pace requiring short bursts of sprint energy along with long-term stamina over the course of a match. The sustained energy and holistic muscular strength required in a hockey match help develop the body's cardiovascular system, therefore improve your breathing by pumping more oxygen around the body. Hockey is one sport that works on both your legs as well as upper body at the same time. Playing hockey is a great way of developing your body's leg muscles, including the hamstring, hips and calves. 
It also improves the endurance of shoulder muscles, triceps and forearms. Hockey relies on good coordination between the eyes and the hands and improves the reflexes and reaction times of its players. 4. Swimming Swimming works your whole body, improving cardiovascular conditioning, muscle strength, endurance, posture and flexibility all at the same time. Your cardiovascular system in particular benefits because swimming improves your body's use of oxygen without overworking your heart. As you become fitter and are able to swim longer, your resting heart rate and respiratory rate will be reduced, making blood flow to the heart and lungs more efficient. If you're looking to lose weight, swimming is just the ticket. Chess Chess is now known to be an imaginative and strategic game. People find playing chess relaxing and it also helps them to think analytically. It improves the focus and concentration of one's mind. Chess teaches a person to analyze different situations and think a thousand times before taking a step, as not always the first decision is the right one. As chess requires one to remember various position and strategies, this helps in improved memory and increased concentration. Sports are the most natural way to stay fit, since playing a sport never seems like an effort, but only seems fun. Now let's discuss over the next topic, sports nutrition. Physical activity does not have to be vigorous and everyone and anyone from young children and teenagers through to pregnant women and the elderly can incorporate at least some form of exercise into their daily routine. Energy Energy is measured in calories, a word that we should all be very familiar with as it is how our intake of food is calculated. On average, a man needs around 2500 calories a day to maintain his weight and for women, this figure is slightly lower at around 2000 calories per day. The calories we do consume must provide a good energy and nutrient balance and ideally the average day-to-day -day diet should include the following nutrients. Carbohydrates. These are our key energy source. Fats. Another key energy source important in relation to fat-soluble vitamins. Minerals, inorganic elements which occur in the body. Proteins, needed for the growth and repair of muscles and body tissue. Roughage, the fibrous indigestible portion of our diet which is needed for a healthy digestive system. Vitamins, water soluble and fat soluble vitamins are important in many of the body's chemical processes. Water, carries other nutrients around the body and is required for normal body functioning. Nutrients Carbohydrates There are two key forms of carbohydrates, starchy or complex and simple sugars. Simple sugars are carbohydrates which are found in refined sugars and provide a sweet taste. Complex carbohydrates also known as starches include grains such as bread, pasta and rice. The carbohydrates we consume are then converted into glucose, a form of sugar which is carried in the blood and delivered to the cells for energy. Fats Fat is an essential component of any diet as it helps the body to absorb nutrients as well as being a great source of energy which provides the body with essential fatty acids that it is unable to manufacture independently. All fat contains both saturated and unsaturated fatty acids, though are usually referred to as either saturated or unsaturated, depending on the percentage of fatty acids present. Saturated fats are commonly found in animal products and processed foods such as meat, dairy and chips, and the unsaturated fats are found in foods such as avocados, olives, nuts and oily fish. Protein 
Protein is present in every cell of the body and is important for helping to build and repair tissues. It is also used to make enzymes, hormones and a variety of additional body chemicals as well as forming the building blocks of bones, muscles, cartilage, skin and blood. High Protein Diets High protein diets are popular with some sportsmen and women, in particular those who are trying to build muscle such as individuals interested in bodybuilding. Most high protein diets involve a high intake of protein and a moderate to low intake of carbohydrates. High protein diets have also become a popular weight loss method with some research suggesting that protein has the ability to satisfy hunger for longer periods of time than fats and carbohydrates. Energy requirements for exercise When we exercise, the body must begin producing energy at a much faster rate than when it is resting. The heart will beat faster in order to pump blood more rapidly around the body, the lungs work harder and our muscles will begin to contract. All of this will use up our stored energy at a faster rate than normal and for this reason individuals such as athletes who are not trying to lose weight will need to consume extra food each day so that what they eat and what they burn remains in balance. Many nutrition experts recommend that we wait between 1 and 4 hours after we have eaten a meal or snack until exercise as this gives the body time to digest the food. Eating and staying well hydrated are also essential to the training and exercise recovery process. Supplements Supplements are used by athletes, bodybuilders and sportsmen and women to boost their strength, performance and recovery and are available in numerous different forms ranging from multivitamins and minerals through to protein, creatine and various other ergogenic aids which are intended to enhance performance. Common sports supplements include the following. Creatine. Creatine is a high energy compound which helps to store and provide energy. Creatine is produced within the body, occurs naturally in fish and meat and can also be taken in supplement form. Creatine as a dietary supplement is considered to be a legal steroid and is used by athletes and sportsmen and women to increase muscle bulk. Whey protein Whey protein is a natural protein present in milk containing very little fat, carbohydrate or lactose. Energy drinks Staying well hydrated during exercise and training is extremely important and even a small amount of dehydration could be detrimental to performance levels. Drinking water is a good way of keeping ourselves hydrated during exercise periods and some individuals also opt for energy drinks, particularly those who undertake endurance events such as long distance running. Sports Training and Nutrition The day-to-day -day diet and eating habits of individuals who frequently train or participate in sport is very important in terms of performance level and progression. Sport nutrition is essentially the study of the science behind food and how it can benefit or impair sporting performance and fitness. Now in the end, let us summarize what we have learnt in this lecture. A balanced diet is one that provides an adequate intake of energy and nutrients for maintenance of the body and therefore good health. Energy is provided by carbohydrates, fats and proteins. The eating a diet with saturated fats will impair learning and memory. A healthy diet that consists of low fat dairy, whole grains, fruits and vegetables and reduced sugar leads to fewer incidences of high cholesterol and heart disease, obesity, diabetes and even cancer. Sport nutrition is essentially the study of the science behind food and how it can benefit or impair sporting performance and fitness.